Hey, how's it going? If you're a fan of Stingray bases, you might be aware that they've mostly come with one of two types of onboard electronics. The original preamp from the pre-Ernie Ball Music Man days with two bands of EQ, aka the 2EQ, and the now standard 3-band EQ preamp, or 3EQ. But you might have heard lots of players report that they sound different, like that the 2-band sounds more old school and the 3-band is thinner and more modern. Well, if you've ever wondered if that's true, and exactly what difference they do make to the sound, today we're gonna find out. If you'd like to skip straight to the sound samples, definitely feel free to. Here's the timestamp on the screen. But first, here's some information you might find interesting. My last video was about the Stingray sound, specifically from the original pre-Ernie Ball era. And I had mentioned that I had built the whole two-band Stingray preamp from scratch to test out the exact original pre-Ernie Ball circuit. But afterwards, I ended up liking the idea of having a standalone Stingray preamp so much that I took all the parts and built it into a pedal. This is that same preamp I used in that demo, and here's the circuit schematic you see on the screen. Now this original preamp has bass and treble controls, and there's a bit of confusion online about whether the bass, treble, or both controls boost only, or cut and boost. So I ran a circuit simulation in a standard analysis program called LT Spice, and here on the screen is the exact frequency response for the two EQ controls. The curves represent all of the combinations of the bass and treble controls, with each knob at 0%, or fully turned down, 50%, or in the middle, and 100%, meaning turned all the way up. So, just to clear it up, both the bass and treble controls are, in fact, capable of cutting and boosting. So that's the 2EQ. Now in the mid to late 80s, Ernie Ball started producing a new preamp with three bands of EQ, bass, treble, and now a mid control. Soon, this 3EQ version became the standard on all Stingrays and remains so to this day. Ernie Ball has still offered the original 2EQ in various models, most notably in the Stingray Classic range of bases that was available for a period a few years back, but the standard remains the 3EQ. And while both have the Stingray sound, they did sound a bit different. And indeed, they have completely different circuit designs, as you can see here side by side. So as a comparison, here's the frequency response of the 3 EQ. Specifically, this is the bass and treble knobs at 0, 50, and 100%. It was too messy to include the mid knob on the same graph, so I split it into a separate graph here. You'll notice these look a bit different from the 2 EQ, and we'll take a closer look at comparing them a little later. One technical note, this includes the circuit characteristics of the Stingray pickup itself based on values I measured from my own pickup and double checked against other typical Stingray pickups. So it's not just the preamp. There's a reason for that, we'll get into it more in a minute. Both the 2EQ and 3EQ have their fans. From what I've read on forums, I would say that players surprisingly seem to be split roughly down the middle on which of the two preamps they prefer. I'm sure many of us have wondered exactly what difference it makes to the sound, but the only problem is all of the online demo videos I've seen have compared them with different bases, which leaves a lot of variables open. So while I was building this, I thought it was a good opportunity to just go ahead and build this, a pedal version of the exact 3 EQ preamp. This gives us the unique ability to easily switch between them but keep everything else exactly the same. Same bass, same strings, same pickup. And in fact, the bass I'm using for the sound samples that we'll check out is the same bass I put together in my last video, the Squire bass I modified to sound just like a pre-EB Stingray, aka the Squire Ray. Now, why would we want to use that one and not an actual Stingray? Mainly because it still sounds like a Stingray. If you're interested in that, check out my last video. And secondly, because it has no onboard controls. It's completely bypassed straight to the jack. When we plug it into the preamp pedals, the raw sound of the pickup will go straight to the preamp, just like on a regular Stingray. If we use pretty much any other bass with onboard controls, we'll almost certainly get at least a small amount of tone coloration on top of these preamps. There's nothing bad about going through two sets of tone controls at all, but I have tried it both ways, and it does make a bit of a difference. So we might as well just match the basic Stingray setup. Okay, we're going to hear a wide variety of example settings with the bass and treble controls matched between the 2EQ and 3EQ. Since the 2EQ has no mid control, the mid knob on the 3EQ will stay at 50% to make it as close a comparison as possible. 
and to help us get a visual on what we're hearing, on screen will be an overlay of the frequency graphs for the 2EQ and 3EQ for that specific setting, based on the circuit simulations I did. Alright, let's check it out. Now, we don't want to completely ignore that mid-control on the 3EQ, so let's go ahead and listen to different settings and see what difference that mid-knob can make to the sound. We're going to keep the bass and treble at 50%, and for the 2EQ, we won't change anything at all since it has no mid-control. So we'll start with the mids at 0% and work our way up to 100% and see how it sounds. Thanks for listening. Now, if we overlay the full response ranges of the 2EQ and 3EQ as we see here, it becomes pretty clear what the two biggest differences are. First, the three band EQ has this huge drop off in the bass region, regardless of how much the bass is boosted. The bass falls off sharply below about 70 to 80 hertz, depending on where the bass knob is set, and any bass boost you dial in forms a peak but still drops off below that. Meanwhile, the two-band EQ operates more like what you might expect for a shelving filter. In other words, the entire audible bass frequency range can be boosted or cut, including the frequencies down below 70 Hz. Indeed, the 3EQ basically has a built-in high-pass filter. Now, while it may seem like a bad thing to be cutting out this much bass on a bass guitar, it's really not. As an extreme example, here's the frequency content of the lowest possible note in standard tuning on a 5-string or 6-string bass. That would be the open B string. The fundamental is about 31 Hz, and if we assume that the harmonics extend up to about the 5th harmonic, we get up to about 155 Hz. And an important thing to remember is that for any note you play on a bass, 
usually most of what you're actually hearing is in the harmonic range, not the fundamental note. So, if I have a five string stingray, would the three band preamps bass boost do a good job of boosting even the lowest note? Yeah, but in a different way from the two band. I've really highlighted the curves at maximum bass boost here. Same as before, red is 2 EQ, green is 3 EQ. So the note will be very boosted either way, but the three band is going to emphasize the mid bass region of about 70 to 80 hertz, which happens to be at the second and third harmonics of a low B, whereas the two band will really boost the low bass region down to the 31 hertz fundamental. By the way, remember, many, many bass players prefer to include a high-pass filter somewhere in their signal chain anyway. In fact, lots of bass amps include a high-pass filter control. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it myself. It seems counterintuitive, but by cutting out the super low frequencies, it really cleans out the bad kind of rumble that most players really don't want. The second big difference is in the treble range, where we can see this big spike in the 3 EQ's response. Now at maximum boost, the frequency response of the 2 EQ is fairly similar to the 3 EQ. But what's surprising is that for the 3 EQ, that treble spike stays in the response at all settings. For example, here at a 50% treble knob setting, the 2 EQ is basically almost flat through this range. But the 3 EQ still maintains this spike, and it's the same even if you dial the treble down to zero. This is very non-intuitive, but that's just how the 3 EQ works. And without getting into too much technical detail, according to form input by people who are more knowledgeable about preamp circuits than me, it's largely this capacitor to ground right at the start of the 3 EQ circuit that creates this spike, but it's only when it's directly connected to the pickup. For context, passive pickups inherently have a resonant peak in their frequency response, meaning a spike where the frequency response is louder than anywhere else and then the response drops off very quickly above that. It's part of what gives different types of pickups different character. Here on the screen are a few typical examples. By itself, a Stingray style pickup might typically have a resonant peak at roughly 12 or 13 kilohertz or so, or at least mine does, and this generally matches data I was able to find for others. That's pretty high. In fact, 12 or 13 kilohertz is pretty much beyond the range of even the harmonics of a bass guitar. But by putting this capacitor right at the front of the 3 EQ circuit, it essentially shifts that resonant peak down to right about 4 kHz, and that spike remains there regardless of the treble knob setting. Interestingly, the 3 EQ actually cuts off the ultra high frequencies more than the 2 EQ, so it does tend to give the 3 EQ a characteristic clacky, metallic upper treble sound that's different from what you get in most other preamps. To wrap up our conclusions, no matter how you set the 3 EQ, it will pretty much always cut ultra low frequencies, boost a narrow range of treble frequencies at about 4 kHz, and cut ultra high frequencies. Putting these together, it's easy to see why the 3 EQ has a reputation for being clanky and overall a bit thinner sounding. None of these peculiarities are things that you might just assume a preamp would do unless you studied the circuit. And by contrast, the 2 EQ has a few specific characteristics, but it operates a bit more like what you might just expect. And I want to be careful to mention that there's way more to the Stingray sound than just the preamp. Pickup location and pickup construction are a major part of it, so most players tend to agree that both 2 EQ and 3 EQ Stingrays sound like Stingrays. But there is a certain character that has become associated with Stingrays since at least the late 80s, thanks to the switch to the 3 EQ circuit. By the way, in discussing this comparison, I haven't really mentioned the effects of the mid knob on the 3 EQ, because we're comparing it to the 2 EQ, which has no mid control. But obviously that adds a whole other set of options to the sound, if you're looking for more tweakability in the mid range. But if you leave it at 50%, you're basically getting as close as possible to the 2 EQ response. So hope you found that interesting, especially if you're considering replacing the stock preamp on your bass and you're trying to decide between the 2 EQ and 3 EQ, or even deciding on your next Stingray purchase. Either way, thanks for watching and happy playing.